welcome back to our class. We are going to look at the different people who were involved, the major people who were involved in the discovery of DNA. Uh, James Watson and Francis Crick, uh, these two, they were working together to try to um, solve the problem of uh, this uh, DNA molecular structure. As they were working, also, other two uh, people were also working on the same structure, that is Morris Wilkin and Rosalind Franklin. Before I continue, let me just uh, be clear. James Watson is a guy, Francis Crick is a guy, Morris Wilkin is a guy, Rosalind Franklin is a lady. By the time this DNA was being discovered, uh, ladies were not uh, regarded as uh, people who can do something. So in actual sense, there were some issues of gender. So Rosalind Franklin was taken to Morris Wilkin just to be an assistant. So Rosalind Franklin worked with Morris Wilkin and Rosalind Franklin discovered the structure of DNA using X-ray diffraction pictures. So without the concern or without the knowledge of Rosalind Franklin, Morris Wilkin took the picture to James Watson. In actual sense, Morris Wilkin used the Rosalind Franklin pictures and then took them to James Watson. Once James Watson and Francis Crick, the moment they saw the picture, then they had to figure out or it wakened their brain and they saw, they got an imagination how the DNA structure looked like. So they used that information to find out the further information about the structure of DNA. Unfortunately, uh, Rosalind Franklin died before a Nobel Prize was given. But before she died, she published uh, an article uh, about DNA structure. The same time James Watson uh, published the article of DNA structure. Before she died, she published a, uh, an article concerning about DNA structure also uh, James Watson also did the same. But because by then people were not recognizing ladies too much, so they took James Watson's uh, paper to be on top and then Rosalind Franklin paper to be on bottom. And then what happened? They recognized James Watson, that is the one who published first. Therefore, the, the credit goes to James Watson and Francis Crick other than Rosalind Franklin. Yet it was the hard work of Rosalind Franklin to be the person who started with the discovery of this because James Watson used the X-ray refraction pictures to, uh, to explain more detail concerning about this. So uh, this shows that we should not undermine ladies that they cannot do anything. They have ability to do the work guys can do in terms of education. So uh, we should stop uh, gender uh, issues. We thought that ladies don't, cannot do anything which is not right. Even up to now, this perception is still available that ladies cannot do anything, but this is wrong. Why? We have a lot of things which are being made by ladies, and these ladies, they are helping in our community. And so this is just a clear indication that, um, that even ladies can do something which is important in science. So we want to see more scientists who are ladies coming out like Rosalind Franklin. So unfortunately, Rosalind Franklin died at the age of 32 before the Nobel Prize was given. So in 1962, that is James Watson, Francis Crick, and then uh, um, Maurice Wilkin, they received a Nobel Prize determining the molecular structure of DNA, how DNA is a double helix with complementary base pairs. But if Rosalind Franklin was there, then it means that 
Rosalind Franklin would have obtained a Nobel Prize instead of Morris Wilkin. Why? Because Rosalind Franklin did more, uh, did a great job than Rosalind Franklin, sorry, than Morris Wilkin, because Morris Wilkin just stored the information of Rosalind Franklin and took it to James Watson and Francis Crick. So how do we, let me just repeat, James Watson and Francis Crick, they were working together uh, to find out the molecular structure of DNA. Uh, Rosalind Franklin and the Morris Wilkins, they also working together. They found out the structure of DNA using the X-ray diffraction picture. This structure was taken by uh, Morris Wilkins to James Watson and Francis Crick, and then was used to discover by James Watson and Francis Crick to find more that DNA is a double helix with complementary base pair. They found out that um, the, 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 the DNA consists of adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And they found out that uh, adenine, the percentage of adenine is equal to the percentage of, of, of thymine and the percentage of guanine is equal to the percentage of uh, cytosine. Therefore, they say that adenine complements with thymine and guanine complements with um, uh, cytosine. Therefore, they say that these are complementary base pair. They are, uh, this is how this came about. This, uh, that it is a complementary base pair. This forms, because there are two strands, it forms is a double, and then these strands, uh, they twist around it uh, because it is in a wave form, a wave form, yes, it forms a helical. Because it is two strands or two helicals, then it forms what you call a double helix. And then say that DNA is double helix with a complementary base pair. That's how they came about with this structure of DNA. How do we ask an exam? How do we ask an exam? Who discovered the structure of DNA? That is James Watson and Francis Crick. Who discovered the structure of DNA using the X-ray diffraction pictures? Then that is Morris Wilkin and Rosalind Franklin. In which year was uh, DNA discovered? That is 1962. Which one of the following obtained the Nobel Prize uh, of the discovery of DNA? Crick, uh, then they, they can give you different options. But in this case, they can. Uh, you have to know these two names because we can mix the James, James Franklin and then Maurice uh, Watson. In this case, you have to know. Yes, you because you see Maurice, you think that uh, that's the person. Yet they say that it is Maurice, Maurice uh, Watson, whereby that person person doesn't exist in this case. So James Watson, Francis Crick, Rosalind Franklin, and then Maurice Wilkins. Yes, it's supposed to be like that. You have to know them. Don't uh, confuse them. Some people say that these names are complex. How many people, how many people do you know in your class? There are so many people you know, but you know them, their names, if you're a soccer um, uh, supporter, how many people do you know? In, you, you know almost the whole team, but these are just the four people whereby you can still memorize these people and then you are, you are able to get marks just in case that a question has come. So that's how we can ask questions concerning about this. Uh, after this, we will look at the questions, more questions which are regarding to, to this uh, topic. Then uh, let's look at the detailed structure of uh, DNA.